All right, so now that I've played live with Modern Witchcraft a bunch of times now, and if you don't know, Modern Witchcraft is the name of the band I'm in with my buddy, well, my best friend, Stephen Barton. And um, we've had a bunch of live shows. They've, they've gone great. Stephen just released a video over on his channel going over our mixer and um, in-ear monitor system. And, uh, and um, I'll leave a card up in whatever corner for you guys to check that out it's a down and dirty video but it goes over everything that we kind of have set up and um, in order to get our own mixes in our own in-ear monitors and in my opinion this being the first time i've played with in-ear monitors in a band i played in previous bands it's 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 night and day i mean we play tighter i'm able to hear myself a lot better less volume, little to no ear fatigue now. You know, I don't want to say the game changing phrase, but you know, it's cool. So what I'm going to do now is kind of go over my live rig setup and how it integrates with our in-ear monitor system for Modern Witchcraft. Just kind of go over like a base overview of the setup. And if there's some interest, perhaps I'll go into a little bit more detail and maybe we'll even do a little video in the jam spot in Ohio, um, kind of showing how everything is hooked up and, and how it all works together. So I'm gonna try and keep the rambling to a minimum. But you guys who follow me know that's pert near impossible. Pert near, I'm, I'm an 82 year old person. Let's take a look at the pedal board, shall we? Okay, guys. Yeah, here we go. This is a uh, this is a pedal board, and uh, yeah, before you guys have a fucking brain aneurysm, it's a quad cortex. I've been rocking the quad cortex for a little bit now, thanks to my buddy Dean. Not sure if this is a permanent solution. I've been working with him, creating some tones, and actually a few other people. So I've been using the quad, and while I have it, I may as well. I mean, what better way to get to know it than to actually use it? So I've been diving fully into using it. There's no debate whether this is better than the Stomp or the Helix or whatever. We're not getting into that. It's great. It sounds good. They all sound good. If you don't like it, I don't care. If you do like it and you don't like that, I also don't care. I'm a Helix guy. I have been a Helix guy. I don't see that changing right now. I'm using the quad so I can get to know it and understand how it works and how it sounds. Anyway, yeah enough of that so yeah and also another polarizing thing is there's a there's an hx stomp on here don't worry everything's okay your world it will not be flipped upside down i'm using the hx stomp to kind of um use some of the effects that quite frankly the stomp doesn't have so there you go helix is better whoa no <laughs> some there's some effects that are in the stomp that aren't in the quad. Holy crap. So what I'm doing very roughly is I have the stomp in the effects loop of the quad cortex. I have MIDI hooked up, but I don't have it actually doing any switching. I'm only using some effects on one patch for right now before I fully dive into how MIDI works and everything. Anyway, so the HX stomp is running into the effects loop of the quad cortex. Now, I'm gonna walk over to the other side. Don't mind my dirty socks. Now, from the quad, for those of you who know, and you can, perhaps I'll put on a, a graphic of the back of the quad. Otherwise, don't be a lazy ass and look it up. From the uh, XLR outs, I have this XLR. Um, this XLR will run to our Modern Witchcraft's in-ear monitor mixer. That mixer, if you refer to Steven's video, has a splitter. So we run our processors. Steven has a quad cortex. I'm using the quad cortex. Bass player Cody is using an HX stomp. We run those signals to the mixer of our in-ear system, and then we split it. We split it to front of house and we split it back into our auxiliary sends so that we can each have a mix. So, like I said, the signal chain runs out this output. This is output one, 
it runs to the mixer so that I can hear my setup. Now, output four here runs to the Seymour Duncan power stage, comes in here, you can't see it, don't worry, there's an input. It runs out to the speaker cable, which would typically go to a cab that's on stage, but obviously we're not on stage, so it's not going to a cab. It's just right here. Here's the speaker cable. I run that to the cab. Again, this goes to the mixer. The mixer has a splitter. Front of house can have my process guitar tones, just as they sound in my ears. He doesn't have to do any mixing. He does not have to mic a cab. Those of you who know, understand this process. Um, I'm bypassing the impulse response and a few EQ moves and um, extra delays and reverbs. Just going straight to my cab on stage. I just have it for stage volume to move that air mat. I just need to feel, feel some air move. You know, bro, modelers don't move air. Weird. This one sends a signal to a cab with speakers that move and, and move air. So, um, again, just to beat a dead horse, this signal out the XLR, fully processed guitar tone, runs to the mixer, goes both to my inner ear monitors in front of house, then output four goes to the Duncan power stage, which runs a, a giant thick boy speaker cable to my cab that is on stage for some stage volume. The first thing in line, I have the, the Dunlop Mini uh, expression pedal. I have it set up not as just a straight volume pedal, I have it set up as an expression pedal so that I can control things in the quad. And ironically enough, it's pretty much just controlling volume in most of the patches that I have it set up on. For my guitar input, I'm using the Shure GLX D16 Plus. That's this, this is the receiver. It runs into the first input of the quad cortex that carries my guitar signal and you know how that works beyond that if you don't this is not the video for you and i mean this is the basic setup it, so it's a very simple setup we got the guitar input the wireless again is the sure glx d16 plus goes into the quad cortex i have the hx stomp in the effects loop of the quad cortex just to add a few extra effects that i want on a certain on a particular song the output, again, we're beating horses. Uh, the left output, XLR, sending the full process guitar tone to both front of house and my inner ear monitors via our mixer setup. The output four is sending to the Seymour Duncan power stage before the impulse response. So there is no impulse response going to this. That's key. This runs to my two by 12 that is on stage for stage volume. That's my setup. That's it. It's very simple. I spoke several minutes repeating myself. Now let's take a look at a few of the pieces that I use for my in-ear monitor. End of the setup. Quiet. You can lay in here, but you gotta be quiet. No, hey, lay down. This dude. All right, so this is the receiver for the Sure Wireless system. Um, it also has this connector, obviously, so that you can, you know, plug your guitar in. See how that works? Plug your guitar in. It turns your guitar signal into magical waves and sends it to the uh, GLDX receiver. Uh, this system has been amazing. It's a little pricey. I think maybe 450, maybe 500. Um, a little pricey, not gonna lie. Uh, but uh, it's nice not being uh, anchored by a cable. Um, the in-ear system I'm using is the X Vive U4. You guys have seen this everywhere on the YouTubes. Um, let's not pretend that not every guitar YouTuber on the planet hasn't been sent this. Now, X Vive has since sent us a receiver set. Um, you know, there's three of us in the band, four of us in the band, and you know they sent us one. So as compensation for me doing a video before. 
Now, before that, I had already purchased one. Steven had already purchased one. So we've been using them. So I don't give a shit uh, what you think as far as like my honest opinion. My honest opinion is that these things have been rock solid. I have not had any dropouts. I've had a little bit of interference when I have it next to my phone in my back pocket. That's it. Other than that, no problems. We have had no problems with myself, Steven, and Cody each using uh, our own individual systems. So this is the receiver. You plug your in-ear monitors into them, and boom, you get you get your uh, you get your in-ear monitor mix. Now for the in-ears, I'm using. And, and these are on Amazon. A, a couple different companies make them. They're all Chinese companies, but they are the KSZS10s. They are five driver in-ear monitors. They're fantastic, like um, amazingly fantastic. And they average around 40 bucks. There are a couple different Chinese companies on Amazon that make these, the very same model, the KZZS10 Pros, five driver in-ear monitors. Um, I have a couple pair of these just because they're so cheap. I have a backup. I've had good luck with them. Uh, Steven and I would recommend changing the tips out. We're kind of sweaty hogs. And these, the, the little rubber ones that come with it, tends to kind of slip out of your ear after a while. We got the rubber tips that he says are amazing. They really kind of isolate a lot more. So much so that he's had to adjust his in-ear monitor mix. I have replaced the ends from being the rubber ones with these foam ones because the rubber ones, once you get sweaty, they just pop right out of your ear. So if you don't want that to happen, spend a little money, get these things. Um, actually, they were unrealistically expensive, but they do work and they've improved using these. So worth the money, but it was about $15 just for these foam tips uh, to replace the ones that come with it. But if you're someone who doesn't really get bothered by that, or you're not maybe a, someone who moves around a lot on stage, or you're not a sweaty person on stage, um, then maybe you don't need those, in which case you can just run with the ones that come with either the C10s or the nicer versions of these. I ordered some, I have not swapped them just yet. So I use the Chinese $50 KZZS10 Pros, five driver monitors, you can get them on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. I run into the X5 receiver or transmitter and the receiver goes into our in-ear monitor mixer. Um, I guarantee I'll it. see if I can pull a chunk of Steven's video up. So we have four auxiliary. Each of those auxiliary outputs has its own individual mix. So we each have our own individual in-ear monitor mix. Uh, I have this little 90 degree elbow that I bought on Amazon so that when I plug it in, it's not so cramped. The three receivers next to one another just won't fit because the aux inputs are way too close together. So I have this little elbow kind of sticks it up above and it works well. And again, these, this has just been rock solid. I've had no issues with it. I really enjoy it. It's been rad. Uh, that's, guys, that's it. That's my whole setup. I run that pedal board into our mixer. Again, I'll uh, refer to Steven's video for that. Well, I'm sure we'll have more content on it. I guarantee it. And uh, that's how I run it. For our live shows, I've been primarily using my Solar Baritone. Um, the last couple shows, I've used my Baritone builds just because I was having issues with the Solar Baritone. And my Baritone builds have been rock solid. Um, so, nothing I despise more than a guy holding guitars up in front of a camera. Here's the, here's the Baritone Solar. You guys have seen this on the channel lots and lots of times. Uh, I just don't have it framed up very well to show guitar, so I'll show them anyway. Um, the baritone build, primary baritone build I've been using with the uh, amazing roasted maple warm-off neck. Gonna hide my face. Folk, anyway, 
it, it doesn't matter. Uh, man, this thing is sick live. Really been kind of in love with my baritone builds. Thanks again, Warmoth. They're not answering my emails because I think I took too long to do the uh, Warmoth guitar neck. I don't blame them. Probably a bridge I inadvertently burnt by being burnt out. Yeah, you know, such is life. Uh, we're at the point of the video where I would, I'm would i risking just completely rambling about nonsense. I hope this video uh, maybe gives you some ideas, inspires you. Uh, if, if you guys have any questions, shoot them my way, shoot them Steven's way. I'll refer to Steven's video for the live, uh, for the, for the mixer setup. This one's a little loosey goosey. I know in my new space upstairs at the house in what we're, um, dubbing the Beetlejuice room because it's white and purple and they're going to be black and green. And we like Beetlejuice before before everyone else did because we're old so you know that makes us trendy and cool anyway guys thanks so much for watching again if you got any questions or you know suggestions or i mean lord knows there's gonna be plenty of assholes leaving stupid comments i guess i'm here for those too don't be surprised if i don't answer them though uh yeah let me know down below Keep the conversation going. If you guys have any ideas for some additional content, again, leave those suggestions down in the comments. I'll leave links to everything. Um, most of this gear I got out. Uh, most of this gear I've acquired through Zounds. I don't know if you guys know what Zounds is, but uh, it's where I go to get most of my gear. That and Sweetwater, if Zounds doesn't have it, um, but, you know, I'll leave links down below. I'm rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. What do I usually say here? Uh, take care of yourself. Be useful to someone. And we'll see you in the next one. I don't know. That, one, that didn't feel genuine. That didn't feel genuine. YouTube feels a little weird. Just my opinion. Anyway, guys, we'll see you in the next one. See you later. And um, 